Okay, here's our last problem for this section. Uh, we want to take this matrix A and see what matrix I get if I were to raise that to the 13th power. Now, um, if we weren't sure what to do at this point, you could always start just multiplying copies of A together. Um, that's not a terribly efficient method, but it should get you an answer. Um, and at 13, yes, that's a big power, but it's still reasonable to do that, much more so than if I were asking you to find um, A to the 100th power, for example. That seems, again, theoretically, uh, we can do that. Um, but, you know, realistically, that would, that would be a long and uh, arduous process. So we are going to use diagonalization to help us come up uh, with this um, with this example uh, or with this answer. Uh, so keep in mind that if I diagonalize this, um, I'll, I'll go through the theory real quick, but if I were to diagonalize this, I would have P inverse AP um, is some diagonal matrix. We'll call it D again. Now, if I were to raise both of these to the 13th, notice that doesn't quite give me A to the 13th, but it does give me 13 copies of A uh, that are kind of just sandwiched in. Um, but notice, I won't write it all the way out, but I'll, I'll start it here. Let's say that I have 13 copies of that. Now, matrix multiplication um, as long as we preserve the order, because again, it's not commutative, but as long as we preserve the order, um, this is associative, so we can regroup these however we want. So notice, I've got a P and a P inverse next to each other at the end and beginning of every factor. So essentially, all this stuff in the middle, and again, this is equal to D to the 13th, all this stuff in the middle, except for the A's, cancels. Now, I do have a P inverse at the uh, beginning, but then I've got 13 copies of A. Once I, once I cancel all the P's, um, I've got 13 copies of A uh, that are adjacent. And then I've got this P at the end. So once I have that, I can just multiply by P on the left and P inverse on the right, and I will get A to the 13th equals P D to the 13th P inverse. Now, um, you know, you might look at this and say, well, yeah, but I still have to do D to the 13th. But remember, a diagonal matrix to a power is easy because all I do is raise uh, the entries on the main diagonal to that power. Um, uh, back at the first uh, chapter of this course, we talked about uh, what it means to multiply a, any matrix by a diagonal matrix, either on the left or on the right. And we can use that idea um, to show that the, we just raise the numbers on the main diagonal of D to the 13th power. So this is the idea. We wanna diagonalize um, A first. Now again, this is the same example. I, I reused examples throughout this chapter just because working uh, fresh problems uh, from scratch uh, would just be very, very time consuming on this. So um, again, this was from the very first example in um, this section, but we found that, um, let's see here, lambda equals two uh, gave us these basis vectors. Lambda equals one gave us this basis vector. And so we formed P uh, simply by putting those columns in that order. And then we um, showed that P inverse AP um, was this diagonal matrix. And as alluded to earlier, notice when these two were the first two columns, lambda equals two was the entry in the main diagonal in the first two columns. Uh, similarly, lambda equals one is the diagonal entry on the third column. Uh, so this is our D right here. So um, let me remind you, because we found uh, this as well, 
P inverse is one zero two one 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 negative one zero one. We found that uh, four problems back, four example problems back. So based on what we did up here, we could say that um, a to the thirteenth is P. I'll go ahead and put that right here. D to the 13th. Now again, here's D. So we're just going to raise 2, 2, and 1 to the 13th powers and leave all of these as zeros. And then we'll put P inverse on the end. And 2 to the 13th is 8192. Um, so at this point, you could just multiply um, all of these matrices together. Um, I will save that uh, verification for you, but I will tell you what the answer ends up being at the end. So the first column uh, is negative 8190, 8191, 8191. The second column is 0, 8192, 0. And the last column is negative 16,382, 8191, and 16,383. Like I said earlier, um, we could just start multiplying copies of A together. You know, you could do like a a squared, and you'd have to, since we're finding a to the 13th, you could do six copies of that and one more copy of a, and then try to combine copies of a squared together and a to the fourth together and so on. Um, but again, that will probably be pretty tedious, especially um, if, like in this example, we already knew what the eigenvalues were. Um, and, uh, you know, we already knew what the eigenvectors were, and even we even knew what P inverse was because we had done that uh, previously. So this makes for a, a much cleaner um, raising A to the 13th power. Um, it's also a pretty elegant solution. Uh, and like I said, if you were gonna find A to the 100th, uh, I think you would probably rather do it this way uh, than trying to multiply copies of A by hand over and over and over. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense, and uh, if you have any questions, please let me know.